I like working out here. I like being in the outdoors with a purpose. I'm not one of those people like, let's just go on a hike. Why? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, there has to be a point, I guess. Let's go see this lake. Or there's a red-shouldered hawk nest or something. Something like that. I'm not complaining when I get to lay on my couch and watch Netflix. Like, I mean, and at the same time, I do like being out here. We have climate change and we have increasing intensive forest management. How are those going to affect animal populations in the future? Intensive forest management is a type of land use where they are being clear cut and then replanted and site preparation methods are being applied to favor commercially valuable trees to meet the growing needs of human population. The overarching goal of the study is to see if we can have our cake and eat it too. Can we have these high wood products producing sites while also maintaining biodiversity? I am looking at cavity nesting songbirds. We are working on eight different tracts of forest land throughout the Western Oregon Coast Range, and they are all under intensive forest management regimes. We are measuring reproductive success of house runs to determine if there is any measurable effect of intensive forest management. A house wren nest would be reproductively successful if at least one fledgling survived to leave the nest. I'm using video cameras out on these stands to measure how much house wren adults are feeding their nestlings to get an indirect measure of food availability on the sites. Once we've collected the video footage, we have a team of undergraduates going through every video and counting the number of trips that adults are making to the nest and also to identify what invertebrates are being taken to the nest to get a sense of the quality of the habitat in which the nest box is located. I approach the nest boxes as slowly and quietly as possible so as not to stress the birds out. On these nest boxes, we also have temperature data loggers called eye buttons, and they are out there all season, day and night, logging temperature, both outside and inside of the nest box. I download the data from the temperature loggers and then I reset them. I open the nest box and record the contents of the nest, how many eggs there are, are there nestlings, and how many nestlings there are. Now it's time for me to measure the nestlings. The nestlings are already very active, their eyes are open, they're flapping their wings, they're, um, they're calling to their parents, they know something's up. In order to keep them safe and make it easier to handle them, we wrap them in small blankets, like a little birdie burrito, and weigh them. Eight point oh one. Once I have measured all of the nestlings, I carefully put them one by one back into their nest. Science is a process and it's almost never straightforward. There will be many unforeseen challenges that come up that you have to adapt to. Perhaps one variable that you were interested in measuring doesn't quite pan out because your equipment isn't working, making it impossible for you to analyze that particular set of data. And so a lot of science is creativity and adaptability and perseverance. 12.55. It's not a straightforward process. Science can definitely be difficult, but it can also be fun and rewarding. Since I was in preschool, I have always had a great affinity for animals. Wildlife ecology appealed to me. Uh, 
because you got to get outside a lot and see the whole and not just the parts. Like looking through a microscope didn't appeal to me as much as looking at a landscape. Like most people just look at you and I'm like, oh yeah, there are a bunch of trees, a bunch of bushes. And then you really look at them and you're like, oh, okay, here's Douglas fir, here's foxglove. When you pay attention that there are slightly different plants here than there are over here. There are slightly different plants at the bottom of the slope than there are at the top. There are very fine-tuned and very logical processes that are going on out here, even though you just see a bunch of plants. I'm really interested in life. It takes on so many forms and works in so many different ways. 